For this tutorial, I don't want to spend any time on the design. If you download the project from the Appy Builder community, you'll see four different start screens. Screen 1, API, and Help are examples of how you can put a companion app together, how you can make it look visually appealing, but you can see here there are a ton of components just to make this screen look pretty, and you can go through the project folder and see how all of that works. For this tutorial, let's just focus on understanding how we make the connection to the API, and then you can worry about making it pretty once you understand that concept. Let's make a little test screen. I've gone ahead and called this screen tutorial. We need a label and a progress bar. Call this label JSON, set its text to loading data, call the progress bar loading bar or whatever you want really, and customize it a little if you'd like. Remember, this is just a test screen. It doesn't have to look pretty. Next, add a table layout named data. This needs two rows and two columns. I'm going to set the width to 84% just for a little extra padding on the sides. Drop four labels into this table, one label in each cell. The first two labels will be named title name and title guild name. These labels will not change. The second will be called data name and data guild name. As you can probably guess, this is where my account name and the guild name will appear once we grab that data from the Guild Wars 2 API. Next, add a clock component named loading. Uncheck the timer always fires and timer enabled options, but leave the interval at 1000. This represents one second. Lastly, add a web component to the screen, call it Guild Wars 2, and uncheck every option in the properties window. So our really ugly test page is done. Let's move on to the block section. We need six global variables. The first is temporary list that is going to store our JSON data from the web. The next list will store information about my account and the final list will store information about my guild. Create a variable named result that will allow us to store temporary data to pass between procedures. Next, create a timer variable set to zero and a wait variable set to two. We're going to use these variables to interact with the clock. The timer variable will increase each time the clock ticks, and the wait variable is the number of seconds we want to wait before we execute each command. First, create a procedure named toggle results with an argument named boolean. Set data's visibility to boolean. We want to hide the table layout while we're loading data onto the screen, and then show the table layout once the data has been loaded. Create another procedure named toggle animation with an argument named boolean. In this procedure, we'll change whether or not the clock is enabled and whether or not we can see the progress bar. Next, create a procedure named initialize screen and call both of the procedures we just created. Set the results to false and set the animation to true. This will turn the clock on and show the progress bar. To make this procedure work, we'll call initialize screen once we start the app. We're pulling information from the Guild Wars 2 server, which means there could be a delay in retrieving that information, especially if we're trying to access part of the API that has a lot more information, like an inventory or an entire list of items. What we want to do is grab the information from the Guild Wars 2 server and store that information into a list. We can then access that list instead of continuously trying to request information from the Guild Wars 2 server. We also need to wait about two seconds in between each request in order to give our app enough time to talk to the Guild Wars 2 server and retrieve the requested information. Before we update the clock, we need a few more procedures. Create set token URL with an argument named path, and this procedure will recreate the address that we need to access the data that we want. Add three local variables, Guild Wars 2 API, access token, and API key. Guild Wars 2 API will be the start of the address. Notice that we're also including version 2 in this procedure. You probably guessed that the access token variable is the access token portion of the address. And you also probably guessed that API key is where we put our API key. Next, set Guild Wars 2 URL to the address that accesses the information that we want. In this join block, we're using four variables. Notice that path isn't set here. Path can be anything that follows this address pattern. If we change path to account, this will allow us to see the information about the account. We set the value of path when we call this procedure. So we can actually reuse this procedure a couple of times as long as the address we're trying to access follows this exact same pattern. In order to get the JSON data from the address, we need to call guildwars2.get. But as we saw earlier, we could get information about a guild without an API key using an older version of the API. Create a procedure called get guild URL, but leave it blank for right now. 
We're going to come back to it in just a second. We need to do a few more things before we can finish that procedure. Next, create display data and also leave this one blank for now. We'll come back to it in just a second. Open the Guild Wars 2 component and notice there are two events that are very similar. The difference is that got file will return a file name and got text will return response content, basically text. The web.get procedure will call both of these events. You specify which event you want to call by checking or unchecking the save response property. We want to uncheck all of the options in the web component for this example. By doing so, when we call guildwars2.get, we also execute guildwars2.gottext. In this event, we're going to wipe all of the data in the JSON list every time we call this event. This gives us a fresh temporary list. Next, we say if the response code is 200, which means we received some data from the Guild Wars 2 server, then set our JSON list to decode the JSON text. What this does is take all of that raw JSON data and decode it into a list format that we can work with. Now, grab a loading.timer event. This is where things get messy, but it's important to understand what we're doing. We're basically going to get the information from the account from Guild Wars 2, store that information into the account list, which should take roughly two seconds, then get the information for Guild Details, store that information into the Guild list, which should also take about two seconds, and then we stop the timer and display the data on the screen. If the timer is zero, then we grab the information for the account. If the timer equals wait, so two seconds have now passed, then we assume our data is ready and we say make a copy of the JSON list and place it in the account list. So it's been two seconds and we've gotten our account data. Time to call get guild URL. This will start the process over, but this time we're using the guild address in the web component. The JSON list gets wiped and is filled with details about guilds. Now, if the timer matches wait times wait, which should be about four seconds total, that should be plenty of time to grab the data from the Guild Wars 2 server. So we make a copy of the JSON list and store it in the guilds list. We're gonna turn off this animation, which is the clock and the progress bar. We'll display the data that we've retrieved and we have to toggle the results back to true so we can actually see all of these components. After the if else blocks, increase the timer by one. Remember, our timer interval is set to 1000, which is the same as one second. This clock ticks once per second. So this command executes as soon as the clock starts. This command executes after two seconds, and this command executes after four seconds, and then the timer stops. Now we've gotten our JSON data, but it's still not in a readable format. Grab a result procedure, which is different than the do procedure. You'll notice the block is a little bit different. Give this procedure two arguments named key and list. In order to make this work, we also need a do result block. In the do portion, set global result to look up in pairs key and list. If we can't find this data, we'll just say something simple like data missing. So what does this mean? The JSON text to code block took that raw JSON data and put it in a readable list. If we were to select a list item, we would see the title and the value. For example, name pixie.6347. We don't want to see the word name, that's the title. We want to see the value, which is pixie.6347. So the key argument will be the key or title that we're looking for. And the list will be the list that we want to search in. This procedure will return that result. However, this procedure is only going to work for pairs of data with only one title and only one value. In Guild Wars 2, you can be a part of multiple guilds. So even though I only have one guild here, this particular option is in an array format. So we need to make a different procedure to handle array data. Get array data will be similar to get data, but we'll add a third argument called index. This will allow us to retrieve a specific index in that array. In the do portion, create two local variables named array data and item. Instead of copying and pasting the blocks from the above procedure, we can just call that procedure again. But it's going to treat that result as a string, so we need to convert that string to a list. We need to grab the item from array data, so set item to select the list item from array data using the index that we specified as an argument. The result of this will be enclosed within parentheses, so we can just segment that result to exclude those parentheses and then return the result. We're almost done. Let's finish up get guild URL by setting Guild Wars 2 URL to the guild address. We already know the first part of the guild address, and the second part is going to be the guild ID. To get the guild ID, we call get array data, set the index to 1, 
the key is guilds, but the list is account because the ID for the guild that I'm in is stored on my account page. Then call guildwars2.get. Finish off display data, but set label JSON to blank. Set data name text to get data. Set the key to name and set the list to account. Set data guild name to get data. Set the key to guild underscore name and set the list to guilds. Now you can run the app. Notice that when the app starts, it displays loading data and shows the progress bar, and we can't see the data table. Once enough time has passed, the loading data message goes away and the progress bar goes away. This means the clock has also stopped and the data is displayed on the screen. You can see that my account name is shown and my guild name is also shown. Pretty cool. If you've downloaded the project from the Appy Builder community, you'll also notice that I've created three more screens with a pretty intricate design. This is going to give you an example of how you want to create a companion app. You want to have a help page explaining what an API key is and why this app won't work without it and how your user can get one. It's also going to have an input box so the user can enter their own API key and store that key internally in a tiny DB so that the user doesn't have to keep entering their API key each time the app starts. And the data that's displayed on the screen looks a little cleaner. It's more pleasing to the eye. I really want you guys to thumb through this project and learn from it. If you don't understand it right away, that's okay. It might take you a couple of tries to really get the concepts down so you can then access any API based off of what you've learned here. All right, you guys, we are done. I just want to mention that although this solution works for a small amount of data, it's not going to work if you attempt to retrieve large chunks of data all at once. Try to split up the data between screens. Organize how your data is displayed so that you don't produce any missing results. Check out the Appy Builder community where you can discuss projects you're working on, stay up to date on current topics, and access tutorials created by community members. You can start building your own Android apps for free by visiting appybuilder.com, and you can also sign up for a free 30-day trial of Appy Builder's Gold Membership. Alrighty guys and gals, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to thumbs up the video, and have a great day. Bye!